Um, let's start off with the article that's um, sending ripples um, around the workplace uh, community, um, at least um, in the work from home um, spheres uh, about this new article from Stanford with Zoom fatigue. Uh, I'm sure you've uh, read the article. Uh, where do you stand on that spectrum? Well, I've read it and I've actually written about it similarly. Uh, it's fascinating to me, this relationship we have with technology. Uh, a year ago, year and a half ago, Zoom was a mostly free product with no corporate penetration. Um, you know, nobody really took it seriously. And a year later, it's a verb and it's a syndrome, right? <laughs> Because every time there's a new technology, there are unintended consequences. And one of the things that nobody had really taken seriously before is what does being online all day staring into a blue light spectrum screen with lots of moving parts actually do to us? Right? <laughs> the, the kind of dream of Zoom and, and products like it, or we could do what we're doing. Anytime, anywhere in the world with the push of a button, you can actually see another human being. And how can that be bad? Well, it's bad because our brains spent hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, not being wired to do that. Uh, so, you know, the fact that there is a technology that we really didn't understand its impact on us, and oh, by the way, you can always trust human beings to overdo anything, right? It's funny, the, the actual article that Stanford said there are four reasons for Zoom fatigue, and there are all these high-end, but there's a fifth one that nobody talks about, which is we're just scheduling too many meetings one meeting with your team and there's a bunch of little videos and everybody plays nice doesn't really matter. You do that four, five, six times in an eight hour span, your brain is going to complain about that. Uh, it's interesting. I started my life as a performer and when I moved into the corporate world, uh, you know, my specialty was presentation skills, live interactive presentation skills. And then about 15 years ago, when I made the decision to focus on virtual, the biggest thing that people asked me is, okay, so now I'm doing webinars and virtual meetings and I'm not traveling and I'm not standing up and I'm not doing it. Why am I more tired? You know, and some of that is because when you're in a room with people, you're getting all kinds of positive reinforcement, right? Your people laugh at your jokes and your endorphins go off. Uh, you're getting, you're literally getting energy, exchanging energy with other people. When you are online, it's a one way flow. And even seeing you smiling and nodding and politely listening to my blather is not the same as you sitting there in the room with me having a cup of tea. Uh, so, we are doing things that are literally unnatural and it shouldn't come as a shock that we're learning we need to adjust accordingly. I mean, it's not just video. My favorite statistic, and I don't know why everybody isn't geeking out about this, because I think this is a huge fundamental change, not only in work, but just as human beings function. If you look at the last 30 years, which is kind of the email era, um, for the first time in human history, 70% or more of workplace communication is taking place in writing. That has never happened in the history of the human species. Yes, you can send a message at the speed of light for $0. That's amazing. But what's the trade-off for that? Nuance, context, relationship building, uh, possibilities for misunderstanding because it's not a terribly rich form of communication, you know, multitasking, so you don't really pay attention, so you inadvertently <laughs> say something stupid. Um, that change alone. You know, my daughter 
is 28 years old and I have to remind her periodically that telephones also transmit voice. You know, it is possible to have a conversation on those darn things because she does everything in text as do most people of her generation. And that changes the way we're wired, not just at work, but interpersonally and all kinds of things. So, you know, Zoom fatigue is kind of exhibit A when people are talking about all the bad stuff about remote work and technology will be the doom of us all. But there are huge changes undergoing. And what's happened with COVID is that's been the Rubicon. Everything has kind of been building up, building up, building up. And now we've had the moment, right? Now we need to figure out what to do with it. 